the St. Regis Parish family gathers to celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There are several announcements. The Women's Faith Sharing Group will meet this Monday, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. in the conference room. All women ages 18 and older are encouraged to join us as we socialize, pray for each other, and deepen our faith. Please contact Karen in the Office of Faith Formation for more information. Sign up tables for appointments to take pictures for our parish picture directory are set up at the entrances of the church. Also, during the week, you can sign up using online appointments. See the bulletin for more information. The Knights of Columbus ask you to join them in the 40 Days for Life prayer vigil at the Planned Parenthood Abortion Clinic on Penn Avenue in downtown Pittsburgh. The Knights will be there on Sunday morning, October 30th, between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. See the bulletin for more details. Please pick up the hymnal and turn to number 910. O God beyond all praising. Number 910. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we're reminded of the importance in our readings tonight, the importance of persistence in our prayer and in our lives of faith, uh, of, you know, even at times when we struggle, uh, we still uh, need to continue to be faithful in our prayer and our relationship with the Lord. So as we begin our celebration, let us call to mind our sins, those times that we have failed in that relationship, uh, those times that we have failed to persevere in living out the faith to which we are called. And let us ask our merciful God for pardon and peace. You do not leave your children alone in their sins. Lord, have mercy. You protect us in the shadow of your wings. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
you will raise us up to new life in your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle. After Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and her. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired. So they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek. 
to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word of God is living and active. the thoughts and motives of our hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, There was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, 
Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. There is a misconception in some Christian circles and among certain Christians that somehow if we pray hard enough, God will give us whatever we want. And if our faith is just strong enough, we will never have any problems. But we know that's not the case. And nowhere does Jesus ever promise us a bed of roses. Nowhere are we ever promised that we get everything we want. Nevertheless, the call that we hear in the gospel today is clear. For us to be persistent in prayer, and that persistence in prayer is intimately connected to our life of faith. And as compelling as the parable might be, as compelling as the example of Moses might be in the first reading tonight, we know that it's not always easy to do. A long time ago, there was a young Christian woman, and in those days, women did not have the choice of who they married. The marriage was arranged, and they entered into it whether they liked it or not. This young Christian woman who was very faithful was married off to a pagan husband. And it was not a happy marriage. Her husband abused her, mistreated her, neglected her. And yet she never shied away in her faith. She prayed for her husband, she prayed for her marriage. But nothing ever seemed to get better. Eventually, they had a son, and after her son was born and as she raised him, she prayed and prayed and prayed that her son would follow her example and not her husband's. But lo and behold, as that little boy grew toward maturity, he was following his father's path. And as a young man, as a young adult, he led a very dissolute life, even though he was close to his mother uh, physically and emotionally, he still led a very wild life. And when that young man was about 30 years old, he took off from his hometown, away from his mother. They lived in northern Africa. And he went across the Mediterranean to cosmopolitan Italy. And the poor mother, even though she was continuing to pray for her son, must have thought there is no way. He's going to be away from me. He's going to be under the influence of God knows who. But lo and behold, while he was in Italy, he found his way to conversion. And St. Augustine, as we know him now, was baptized and would eventually become a priest and a bishop and one of the greatest theologians and minds in the history of the church. And that husband and that marriage that she prayed for, eventually he converted to. 
but it happened after literally decades of prayer. The woman is St. Monica. And you think about the life of St. Monica, even though we don't know a lot of the details of her life, she struggled. She prayed and she prayed and she prayed. And all of us can probably relate to this in some way. She prayed and she prayed and she prayed and it seemed like God was deliberately ignoring her. But she was not dissuaded. Monica was a physical embodiment of the parable that we hear today. And we hear about widows in the gospel all the time. We have to understand the true nature of widows in the gospel. In the time of Jesus, if you were a woman, you had very few rights. And any recourse to the legal system or anything else you had, you had through your husband or through your son. And so if you were a widow who did not have a son, you had very little leverage. And so this widow was not just going in as a sympathetic figure before this dishonest judge in the parable. The widow is going in literally with the entire deck stacked against her. She had no hope of success in the legal system of that time. The point of the parable is even though the odds were incredibly against her and she had no standing, it did not dissuade her from persisting and going to that dishonest judge. The judge is not the main character in the story. This poor widow is. She is rewarded for her persistence. The corrupt judge is just acting in his self-interest. But the widow persists against all odds in the face of every adversity. And even though she had no possible right to expect that she would succeed, she nevertheless perseveres. That's the example of Monica. That's something that all of us, I think, can relate to. I remember I had to preach this gospel not too many weeks after my father died. And I will admit, it was hard. Because like everybody else, whenever you have a loved one who's sick, when my dad was dying, I was not Father George, I was the son of a dying man. And I did what everybody else does. I prayed. I've been in ministry long enough, I've seen things that maybe aren't miraculous, but they're in the borderline of miraculous. And even so, the doctors told us he didn't have a long time to live, and the situation was dire, I prayed. I prayed for my miracle. But he died. I didn't get my miracle. And that was hard to deal with. Because we want things the way we want them. And we think that's the way prayer works. That somehow God is like, the giant Santa Claus at the mall with his bag full of goodies who gives us whatever we want. That's not the way that prayer works, and it's not the way that our relationship with God works. Yes, we go to Him with things that we need, and yes, we can pray for the miraculous. We pray for whatever we need. But in every prayer that we offer, every petition that we ever make, we can never forget what the Lord's Prayer teaches us. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Not my kingdom, not my will, but thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. And sometimes that persistence in prayer, even when we're praying for the things that we need and we don't get the answer that we want, it's not that God is ignoring us. It's not that God ignored Monica. It's not that God was toying with Monica all those years. It's not that my prayer for my dad was any less fruitful than anybody else's. 
But part of persistence in prayer, we come to understand something more of God's will. We can learn things about acceptance. We can learn things about trust and faith in God, even when we don't like the answer, even when we struggle to understand. That's really where we need to kick in our faith. It's easy to say we're people of faith when things go well. It's easy to say we're people of faith when the prayer gets answered in the way we want. It's a lot more difficult when we face challenges. Timothy, as a young leader in the church, faced his challenges too, and so he gets encouragement from Paul to stand fast. You know what you, what you believe, so hold fast to that. Scripture has taught you. Learn from that. Teach. Hold fast to it when it's convenient and inconvenient. And our faith grows. That is how we develop and grow in a life of faith. The Lord is calling us always into relationship with Himself. And really, that's what, faith, that's what prayer is. Prayer is our relationship with the Lord. Prayer is going to God and praying for those things that we need, praying for our petitions. Prayer is going to God and remembering to say thank you as we heard the gospel last week about gratitude. Prayer is about being open and allowing God to speak to us so that we can understand as His will is done. That even when we struggle, that even when we question, that even when the answer doesn't come the way that we want it to, we can grow in our relationship with the Lord. It's not always easy. It's not always neat. And yes, sometimes we may even get mad at God in the process, but that's part of growth in faith too. So as we come to our celebration of the Eucharist, we come, this Mass is a prayer of thanksgiving. This Mass is the opportunity for us to lift up our needs, as we'll do in a few minutes. This is an opportunity for us to be in communication with the God who loves us. Yes, to pray and to offer thanksgiving, but also to listen and to allow God to speak to us and to allow His grace to penetrate our lives, especially for those times that we struggle in our daily lives, especially for the times when we may not like the answer to the question, even at times that we don't understand. God is with us, and God delivers. His kingdom come. His will be done. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> Glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so with great persistence, we bring our prayers before God. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That while they work with all their strength, followers of Christ may continue to find strength in praying always and never losing hope we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who rely on Christ may continue to intercede before God on behalf of Ukraine and its people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we treat the most vulnerable and helpless in our society with tender care and concern, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that young men and women will be open to a vocation as a priest, deacon, or vowed member of a religious community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That by our study of sacred scripture, the St. Regis faith community may learn about righteousness and be equipped for every good work, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead, especially Sam McWilliams, may live in the presence of God in the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way the Stitch and Tercola families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. O God of the living, when the Son of Man comes, you will judge us. Hear our prayers and find us worthy to enter your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a longing 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your enemies for the praise and glory of his name. Grant us, Lord, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Teresa of Avila, Saint Regis, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus has taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is number 665, We Remember, number 665.
Christ, the Father's great Amen, to all the hopes and dreams of every heart. Peace be beyond all telling, and freedom from all Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that the pictorial directory signups are continuing after Mass and for the next few weekends. Um, we are off to a good start. We want to keep getting more uh, people registered and, uh, you know, uh, the pictures. Actually, it's going to be about a month from now, so we want to get, uh, get, uh, continue to get people signed up. Um, we have, there are, I believe, eight days that you can choose from. Um, if you would like to schedule on those first couple days, November 17, 18, 19, those sign-up sheets are at that exit. And if you want to sign up for those other days, November 21st and the rest of that week around Thanksgiving, um, those sheets are out in that gathering space. Because there's so many sheets, um, you know, we have to kind of divide it up that way. So uh, first couple days are at that exit. The other days are at the main gathering space over there. Um, you can do it after Mass. And, of course, you can always do it during, week, uh, during the week online. You can register directly. Um, the information is in the bulletin about that. Um, this coming week, I'll be away for a couple of days in the middle of the week uh, for the annual clergy convocation. Uh, it's the annual gathering of all the priests with the bishop, as we do each year in October, uh, to discuss uh, whatever, frankly, it's whatever's on the bishop's mind uh, as far as uh, you know, our concerns in the diocese. Uh, so all of us uh, will be gathered with the bishop uh, from Tuesday afternoon through Thursday afternoon. Uh, so just note there'll be no Mass uh, Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. Um, and finally, uh, we continue through the month of October. November is just around the corner. The Book of Remembrance is out in the main gathering space. If you have any deceased uh, loved ones or anybody that you would like us to pray for during the month of November, the month of all souls, um, you can add them to the book. 
As I mentioned last week, if your loved one's name's already in the book, you do not have to add it again because it's already there. We're praying for all the names in the book, not just those that we added this year, um, but all the names that are in there. But if you do have any new names, um, you can do it after Mass. You can do it any time over the next couple weeks before the month of November begins. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. The closing hymn is number 901, Go, Be Justice. Number 901. Thank you. 